Welcome to the New Orleans Saints podcast presented by SeatGeek. I'm Erin Summers, joined by John DeShazer. Getting ready for the big game this weekend, Sunday, 325 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's going to be fun to have a divisional matchup this weekend back in the Superdome. What are you looking forward to most about this game Sunday, John? Oh, well, you're talking about playing against the defending Super Bowl champs. And I mean, that's always a big game. That's a measuring stick. I know the Saints have won the NFC South division for the last four consecutive years, but Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl. And that's what, that's the carrot that everybody after you measure yourself against the Super Bowl champs. And obviously the Saints are being able to do it at home helps. Um, feels like the Saints have, well, and actually they only have played one of their games at home in the season Superdome this season. So good to be getting back home. Hopefully the home crowd will help out because the Saints have been, not been at home for a long, long time. And it just feels uh, like they're due to put up a really nice performance at home. Everybody is definitely hoping for that. And we have a lot of players that are going to be back on the football field this weekend. Who did we see at practice this week and maybe some new players that are former players that will be back in action? Well, primarily the returnee is uh, right now De- Deontay Harris, the receiver. He had a hamstring injury. Uh, he missed the last game against Seattle, so it's good to have him back in the fold. He's the deep threat. Uh, you get back also at practice, uh, defensive tackle David Onyemata, who missed the first six games with NFL suspension. So he arguably is the Saints' best defensive lineman. So that should help in terms of the run defense and the pass defense. Now we got to see what kind of shape he's in, obviously. He's in great shape for the average individual, but it's great football shape. That's a t- totally different thing when you're talking about leaning on people for 40, 50, 60 plays. So his play might be limited from that standpoint, but he looks physically ready to go. And then, of course, you know, you get back running back Mark Ingram. That helps the offense tremendously because, look, Alvin Kamara is an MVP candidate to me every year. But Alvin Kamara uh, is probably not a player that you want to have 25 to 30 touches per game, and that's exactly what he's had for the last three games. Mark Ingram alleviates some of that burden on him because Mark Ingram comes in, he knows the offense immediately because he was here for eight years. Uh, he's already the team's all-time leading rusher and all-time leader in rushing touchdowns. And also, uh, he knows the offense. He and Alvin get along well, but you can put him on the field. He can do a lot of the same things that Alvin can do. And he is especially vital when it comes to blitz pickup, pass protection. He is very, very, very adept at picking up blitzing linebackers and blitzing a defensive back. So he is a big help uh, for the Saints offensively. But again. You get him in, uh, he only needs to carry it or touch it, you know, 10, 15 times, you know, somewhere in that area to keep that heavy load off Alvin Kamara because you just don't want Alvin to get so run down and so ground down that he can't help you maybe the last three or four games of the season. Alvin Kamara definitely was saying how excited he was via social media. And I know he was asking Coach Payton and Coach Payton said, hey, I'm ahead of you. I'm already looking into signing Ingram. He said that their buddies, his little partner in crime is what Coach Payton called uh, Ingram for uh, Alvin Kamara. So we fun to see those two back at it again. I know with social media is going crazy with the fans being excited. But I have heard that we don't know what number he's wearing yet. So don't go buy a jersey quite yet. We're going to try to figure that out in the next few days. So don't get ahead of yourselves. I know we're excited, but save your money for now. All right. So to preview this matchup, we're going to bring in Brian Baldinger. He works for the NFL Network. He's a former player, great analyst, and he'll be on the national radio call for the Tampa Bay Bucks game here at the Saints. So we're going to bring him in, talk a little bit about this matchup and get his thoughts. Brian, thanks for joining the podcast today. It's great to have you. Welcome to New Orleans. We're going to see you in the Dome on Sunday. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm I'm, I'm really excited about the game. Uh, I really am. Uh, You know, after the trade that they just made, you know, to kind of bolster the backfield and just watching the games from a year ago, including the playoff loss, I mean, they were good games last year, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see the Bucks. I'm excited to see uh, Jameis and the storyline of him going against his old team, all that stuff, you know, and then being in New Orleans. I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, lots of things that you brought up there that we're going to have to unpack here. Okay. You mentioned the last time that they met was that NFC divisional playoff game, and it was a loss for New Orleans, unfortunately. In the regular season, though, they've won the last five straight. So as a former player, 
how do you approach that? Is that last one, the last one you think about, does that come into play? Not, it does, Aaron, because you, everybody will go back and watch that game. You know, I mean, the Saints will go back and watch it and see what the Bucks did. And Bucks will go back and watch certain, you know, see what Dennis Allen might be doing differently defensively this year. Uh, it's pretty much the same cast. There are a couple of different guys. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, kind of what they're doing, just to see if third down packages, blitz packages, what they might be doing different. So they'll all study the game. But really, the players, I mean, that have been in this these battles before, I mean, Cam Jordan, Jameis, Brady, I mean, they, they're they kind of clean slate. Like, it, it, it could be all different on Sunday. A lot of big names going to be back on the Saints field. You mentioned Mike, Mark Ingram, who's going to be back playing here. What kind of maybe added energy or, I don't know, excitement kind of does that add to the game? Well, I, I think, you know, first of all, you, you get out of Houston and you're like, wow, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm free, you know, and he's going to a place <laughs> that he, that, you know, he really, and, and, you know, in Camaro's like, like Camaro is unbelievable, but he doesn't need to carry the ball 20 times in a game like he did, you know, the other night. And that's too many. It's, he could catch 10 passes, you know, that'd be great, but he doesn't need to run it between the track tackles. 20. They needed a guy. And so, you know, to go and put that team together, that running back room, Ty Montgomery, him, I mean, it, it'll be like a, a nice reunion this week, you know, for Mark. And so I, I think guys are ticked off in Houston that they let him go because he's such a great team player, um, you know, and to be reunited in that offense, like he, he won't skip a beat. It'll, it'll be good. He might even start on Sunday for all we know. Yeah. Coach yep. Payton mentioned that he said in his conference call this morning that he expected to see him out there on Sunday. Oh yeah. No, he'll definitely yeah. play. It's just a question of, you know, when he's, what will he start? Um, you know, they'll review protections and certain calls that might be new from the last time he was here, but I, I don't think he's going to have much problem picking things back up. It, Brian, if we, if we flip to Tampa, obviously there was an expectation that they would be a better team this year, but was there an expectation that they would jump this way, especially on offense, the way they've jumped uh, with Tom Brady? I mean, familiarity obviously helps, but I mean, they've really taken a significant jump. Well, they put up 35 points, John, in the first half. I mean, they weren't out of the second quarter. They had 35 points on the board. Now, you know, the defense contributed. They they, they forced a lot of turnovers, gave Brady a short field. Um, but I, I thought they would be a lot better offensively, John, just because they had a season that they played together. It's the same group coming back. It's the same five offensive linemen that were really good a year ago. And so just – and I went to see him in training camp this year, you know, in the heat of the summer – and man, that team really works. I mean, I know teams work, but this team, they really, really get after it. And, uh, you know, I just thought the timing would be better. Evans would be better. And he has been. And so I thought they had a chance to be better offensively just because they had a whole year an off season, a whole training camp to really tighten things up. What have you seen from Jameis Winston, I guess, specifically this season that makes him a different player than he was in Tampa? Uh, I think he feels like he's got an answer for just about everything when things don't work out or when you take, you know, Marcus Callaway away, you know, or, you know, where, where he, can he go with the ball? I feel, I feel like he feels like he has an outlet. And I remember even a couple of years ago, you know, in Tampa, when they played New Orleans, I mean, they took him apart. And I remember just watching the game. I announced the game I, and then I went back and I studied it. He didn't have many places to go with the ball as the rush was caving in on him. And I just felt like, you know, everybody's just going to dump on Jameis because that's what they did. But I was like, I don't even care what quarterback was in there. They were going to have a hard time finding somebody to go to with the ball. And the Saints were taking it all away. And so I feel like, you know, whether it's just getting it to Kamara, you know, like like he did the other night, um, you know, on many occasions, especially in the first half, I just feel like, um, you know, he knows where to go with the ball. And when they take things away, there's an answer to what they're doing. Okay. Now our viewers or our listeners can't see this obviously, but I I've got a question that's not game related. Okay. That board behind you is really, really busy. What's on that board? Well, I mean, I've got whiteboards all over the place. So I mean, I got, <laughs> I got cover three over here that Steve Spagnola put up and, that never comes down because I always look up at it because everybody runs it. 
Um, this is just a schedule, to be honest with you, John, right here. I've got the schedule here, week seven, week eight, what just happened, what's, what's, what's coming up. And then like right here are just things that people tell me, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, and so there's just little sayings, little things that people utter their football phrases, things that I might not have heard before, um, reminders at certain positions. And I just write them down just to either add to my lexicon or just, you know, so I, I understand and know what they mean if I hear them again. Okay. No, also not game related to this specific game, but Baldy's breakdowns have become like part of the football season. Did you expect that to take off the way it did? No, not to where it's at right now, but, but I did, but what I did notice though, John was when I would put something up, like say I started, I don't know, three years ago, maybe four years ago, when I did post something, the thing that really surprised me wasn't so much the fans and their reaction. It was the players. Yeah. Players. I remember, you know, um, you know, I, I love Marshawn Lattimore, obviously, you know, so I, I can't wait to watch him against Evans this weekend. But I mean, when I was posting stuff with Marshawn, he was like retweeting it like in real time. If I sit, do something on Jalen Ramsey right now, I mean, I, I actually tweeted Jalen Ramsey the other day and I said, it's your day off, bro. Like, stop watching this stuff. Like, go have some fun. You just want to get, like, he's watching all my videos and he's commenting, you know? And so um, that's what surprised me was the players that really followed it. Because I think players, they, they just want somebody that e either knows what they're seeing or can explain what they're looking at to help them, help fans understand what they're doing. Yeah, and yeah. so, I mean, if you're Marcus Williams for the Saints, let's just say, He's having a really good season. And, you know, if you just watch the TV broadcast the way most fans do, like you never see Marcus Williams. He's the free safety. He's 20 yards away from the ball. Unless he's making the tackle or touchdowns being scored, you don't you don't even pay attention to Marcus Williams because you never see him. And so, it's you know, coverages, secondary, even all the offensive line and defensive line play, it really gets talked about. Like somebody has to kind of explain why some of these plays work or don't work. Well, let's talk about the Saints defense then. They've been incredible this season. And yeah. there are a lot of guys impacting the game without getting the numbers associated with it. And so, you know, casual fans might not think that they're doing as well because they don't see the interceptions or the sacks or the, the points scored by the defense. But what has stood out to you about the Saints defense? Well, I mean, you know, look, they, they had a, you know, Anyamata got suspended and, you know, they, they released some tackles, Malcolm Brown, whatever. You know, I mean, there's a whole new group of tackles, defensive tackles, and they're number one in the NFL against the run, I believe, as far as rush average right now. I mean, number one, I mean, that was the Bucks thing for a long time. But, you know, you come in there and then you say, okay, well, how is that? What do they what do they do? You know, and so, you know, they've gotten bigger. Tano, Tano Passignon is, is a big guy. Um, you know, you, you look at the play of Malcolm Jenkins and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, like they're just those – nasty little pit bulls that are just like like they're always there and you're like you can't get them out of there like they're going to make those tackles at the line of scrimmage you're going to penetrate um demario is, is demario like he's just you know he's just an awesome player person all that stuff um you know and so like it's 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 really a group effort it's just a group effort of how they're doing it right now and it's a, it's it's a big deal and uh you know I knew they would be good defensively. I, I didn't know, and, and I thought they would return a, a good group. This was a great test this weekend to see how their coverage is going to hold up. But, you know, they've, they've got – I remember talking to Cam Jordan in training camp, and we, we didn't see Peyton uh, Turner last week. But, you know, when you put Peyton and Passignon and Cam and uh, Davenport together, it, it looks like an NBA team. Like, that's the tallest defensive line of football. And that – Size matters. I mean, whether it's reach, length, size, height, that stuff matters. And they they, they put that group up there uh, when they're all healthy. Um, that could be formidable. What did they do successfully against Tampa Bay last season? I guess uh, Coach Payton pretty much kind of threw out the first game. It was a season opener, first game with Tom Brady. Uh, but then the, the next two games, what were the Saints were able to do successfully? Um, it got kind of out of hand in Tampa, and then Tampa was able to flip it here in New Orleans. Yeah, well, that game got out of hand fast, you know, in, in New Orleans. And so um, that when that happens, your game plan kind of goes out the window. Um, but, you know, the first week, you know, they, the, the Saints got a couple interceptions. One was, 
you know, Brady thought that Mike Evans was doing one thing, Evans was doing another thing, and, you know, the ball gets picked, you know, when the timing isn't perfect. And it's got to be, you know, the timing of the passing game, especially when you're throwing passes on timing with anticipation. I mean, you got to trust that a player is going to be there. And so by the time you got to week 19 last year, the divisional championship round, the timing was just so much better. And then, you know, for those first two games, you know, Antonio Brown was not a factor. And by the time you got to the playoffs and really the last eight games of the season, Antonio Brown was a big part of what they were doing. In fact, he was their leading receiver over the last eight weeks. And so when you have a third option that can beat man coverage, that can, after his, what he could do after the catch, um, what he can do when a play breaks down and Brady needs somebody to help him out. Um, Antonio Brown, he, he was like that with Big Ben in Pittsburgh forever. Like he, that's a, a special Antonio Brown skill to rescue plays. You saw it a bunch the second half of the season last year. So I think all those things contributed. Antonio Brown, somebody that's not been participating in practice with the Bucks right now, but they did get Rob Gronkowski back on the practice field Wednesday. How do you think things are going to play out for them offensively against the Saints? Well, he's been, he was such, before the, uh, the injury, um, he was such a factor in the red zone. I mean, I, 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 rem, I don't remember exactly which game it was, but there was a play that it's completely broken down. I mean, it's just like, it just it, either it was poorly designed or somebody did the wrong thing and Brady's got nothing. And like Gronk just reacted you know, after being with him for 10 years and Brady just flipped it to him and it was a touchdown, but you could tell it, it, that's not the way it was drawn up or practiced, but they just have that sort of chemistry. And so, uh, you know, you look at the playoffs last year, the Super Bowl, the start of this season, I mean, Gronk and Brady look like they did for most of their career in, in New England. So he impacts it, nothing against OJ Howard or Cameron Braid or the other guys that have been in there, but they just, Brady doesn't have the same trust and that's probably not the right word, but he doesn't have the same connection with those guys as he does with with the others, with, with Gronk. Sure, Gronk hasn't played since week three. You mentioned the maybe the back and forth that will happen between Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. At what point do you think that one starts getting chippy? <laughs> like the first play. You know, I mean, it did, it did with DK Metcalf the other night. Yeah. And, you know, Sean Payton is going to tell Marshawn, like, you can't do this. Like, you know, DK baited – Marshawn into the play and you know he hit him first they don't see the first guy they got the second guy so it's gonna it it'll be chippy from the first play and it's not just when the ball's in the air either uh Aaron it, it'll be in the run game it'll be off the ball uh they don't like each other no everybody knows it and you know Evans has, has had some bad games against Marshawn now you know Mike Evans can beat anybody in this business with the size and speed and Brady's, you know, accuracy. So, you know, he's got his hands full, but they, they, they allow Marshawn to follow him uh, for much of the game, not all the time. He's in zone sometimes, all that kind of stuff. They change things up, but you know, there'll be a number of plays between those two where you'll see the chippiness, but you'll see the competitive fire both also. Is there anything else that we haven't touched on that stood out to you about this matchup that you're really looking forward to seeing on Sunday? Well, I mean, you know, last week you saw, you know, you saw McCoy back in the lineup. You know, you saw Teron Armstead back in the lineup. You saw Caesar back at right guard. Then they lose Pete. So, you know, they just, they can't keep it all together, which is Sounds unfortunate. Sounds like a because, former offensive lineman here. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to look at it. You know, I'm a big fan of Caesar. Um, you know, we work out together in the offseason here in South Jersey. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's, but, the, but, but Throckmorton has been good. He's been good, you know. I mean, they just keep finding these guys. And and so he'll be fine at left guard. I mean, he won't have the experience that Pete has. They're going up against a really good front, Vita Vea and Sue and those guys. They know each other well. So, I mean, it's it's a good matchup. It's hard to run the ball against those guys, but you have to try. You can't just ignore it. You have to run it at them. Um, you know, you block them up. You, you can get lanes. Uh, the Eagles did a couple weeks ago, and they had a really good success in the second half of the game against them. Made it a close game. So I don't think Sean Payton will shy away from going in there like he'll because you have to. You have to bounce it up a little bit. But I'm anxious to see, you know, much of the offensive line in return. Um, I thought at the end of the season last year that Toronto Armstead was the best left tackle in football. So uh, I think he'd like to go back and try to make that claim here now that he's, you know, reasonably healthy, I guess, and see what he can do against. Look, I mean, 
these guys, Shaq Barrett and JPP, I mean, they ruined Chicago last week. They watched it on tape. You know, they, they didn't give those tackles any help at all. And it destroyed that, that rookie quarterback, Justin Fields. So I'm sure there'll be a plan for both those guys on Sunday. So Ryan, does this game, I guess, essentially come down to which quarterback is more efficient because neither one of these teams allows you to run much. As you said, you know, you, you pound it in there to keep them honest, but really it comes down to who's going to be efficient in the passing game. Well, you know, it's interesting. If you go back to week one, when the saints took the green Bay Packers apart, you know, everybody just said, Oh, you know, Aaron Rodgers is, you know, he don't want to be in green Bay and that, well, you know, in that game, Sean Payton, you know, he had a 10 minute drive in the second quarter. He went for it twice on fourth downs. Like he just wanted to play keep away. And so that was a game plan thing, John, like that wasn't, um, you know, that was, that was by design to just have these long drives. And I could see Sean Payton burning midnight oil this week going, we can't get Brady 12 possessions. Like we can't do it. Like he's too good. They're too good. Regardless of how well we're playing defensively. Like we got to make this an eight possession game, you know, and then we got to find a way to make a stop, get a turnover, force a field goal where we can keep, them in the 20s because you know New Orleans just doesn't have the firepower right now I'm not mean that they can't score 30 they just don't have the firepower that the, the Bucks have so they're gonna have to do it a different way and it might be a fake punt you know it's still a possession whatever it takes I I see the Saints knowing that and building that into their game plan this week thank you so much for the time I only have one last question it is going to be Halloween on Sunday are you dressing up well, that's good. I, it's a good question here, Aaron. Like, I, <laughs> I, I do know that it's Halloween. I do know I'll be in New Orleans. So I know like the outfits and the mask and everything are going to be coming out. I, I will at least have a mask on. All oh. right. And, and not, not one for the pandemic. I will at least have a mask on. Uh, I'll go into, uh, you know, into the quarter on Saturday night and I'll find something to put on coming into the stadium. All right. Well, then yeah. we're going to have to see pictures of that okay. because since right. we'll be on I'll the radio call, we won't be able yeah. to actually see it. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that, Aaron. You bet. All right. Perfect. Thank okay. you so much for joining us. Have a yeah. good call Sunday. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks so much to Brian for joining us. A lot of good stuff there. Looking forward to seeing pictures of the mask that he's going to be wearing because I'm going to hold him to that. John, after listening to that, this whole week, it's been very eventful. What is the best thing that you saw or heard this week? Uh, I think the best thing was uh, Jameis Winston's interview. Now, I don't know if he can hold to it, um, you know, because it's a difficult thing. I mean, he's got to feel some type of way about playing against Tampa Bay. Um, mm -hmm. But he feels really fortunate to just be playing in the NFL after sitting out last season. And from that perspective, you can understand it. He was a starter uh, from the moment he was drafted and then to come to the Saints in 2020 and to sit basically the entire season, learn behind Drew Brees, uh, learn behind Taysom Hill and not be able to take, you know, what you would call, quote unquote, meaningful snaps. Uh, so to finally be able to get back on the field, you can hear the thankfulness and the excitement in his voice every game. All that said, he's playing against a team that basically said, you know what, we feel like we'll be better off without you. And so he's got to feel some kind of emotions about that. Can he maintain those emotions? He sounds like he can, but the game is Sunday. So we'll see how he manages to hold up on Sunday. Yeah, he said this is not a revenge game for him. All the lovey-dovey stuff with his former teammates does not come into play. He's focused on the next opponent and bringing a win home here in New Orleans for the fans. He sounded excited and he definitely sounded level headed about everything. Uh, for me, I think it's going to have to be Mark Ingram. I mean, everybody is so excited about him being back on this football team and expected to see him on Sunday. So looking forward to that as well. And don't forget, there is a toga party in Champion Square. It's Halloween this Sunday. So Caesars, the Saints, they've teamed up to throw a big party. It starts at 12 o'clock in Champion Square. And you are going to be able to win prizes because there's a costume contest at two o'clock. So make sure that you're there and dressed up by then in case you want to win a prize. There's lots of different prizes. Head to NewOrleansSaints.com to check out more details on that. We are looking forward to this matchup. John and I will have you covered pre and post game. Make sure you head to the Saints website or the app presented by Verizon to catch all of that. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. Thanks, John. 
and we will talk to you again on Monday.